Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So there's a really famous problem in game design that clearly illustrates just how difficult it is to make games. It is called the door problem, and in theory it's actually quite simple. Let's say you want to have a door in your game, that's it, very simple. So for example, here's a door. I can go ahead, I can approach it, as I'm close enough I can press a button to open the door, and there you go, it does open the door. So yep, technically I have achieved my goal, I have made a door, I can open it. But is this the right implementation for this game? For example, over here on the side, I've got another door, and this one, instead of being pressed by a button, this one's actually with physics, so I can push the door around, okay, it works, it rotates along the hinges. Or, for example, here I've got another door, and this one is more of a sliding door. So yeah, is this the correct implementation? Or this one over here, this one's also a door, but this one is a locked door, so this one does not open, does not do anything. So here we've got four examples, so if I want to make a door, which one of these is right? Turns out that behind this super simple task, just make a door, turns out there's a million decisions you have to make. I believe the origin behind this famous problem is this one over here, a post on Liz England's blog. This term was apparently coined in 2014 whilst working for Insomniac Games, and back then in 2014, back then they were working on the Spider-Man game. This is a game that is open world, it has lots of buildings, lots of doors, and for every single one of those buildings, for every single one of those doors, you have to answer all of these questions. So here's the post, and it's all about the topic of game design. So here it starts with the question, so what does a game designer do? Are you an artist? Do you design characters or write a story? Or no, wait, you're a programmer? And the answer is nope, neither of those. Game design is a completely separate task, completely separate discipline. Game design is one of those nebulous terms to people outside the games industry. That's about as clear as the term astrophysicist. It's also my job, so I find myself explaining what game design means to a lot of people from different backgrounds, some of whom don't know anything about games. And yep, if you yourself, if you make games, if you tell people that you are a game designer, people outside the games industry, chances are they have no idea what exactly that job means, what does that entail. And here's the door problem. This one is an excellent way on how to describe what exactly does a game designer do. And if you want to learn the more technical aspect of making games, then check out my complete free courses. I highly recommend you go through my C-Sharp Complete course. This one covers pretty much everything from the language, everything from beginner to intermediate to the advanced topics. Or for something recent, check out my DOTS course. This is a very advanced tool set, but if you are on the intermediate or advanced stage, this is something I highly recommend you learn about. Or in general, a great game for beginners is my Kitchen Chaos course. Make a really interesting game, and then a second free course all about taking that game and making it multiplayer. I've also just recently published my latest free complete course. This one is all about making a really awesome 2D game, and this one is also excellent for complete beginners. Check them out with the link in the description. So, simple premise, you are making a game, and in that game you need a door. Or actually, the first question is, are there even doors in your game? So that's the first question you need to answer. But then, if you do have doors in your game, you've got a ton of questions you need to answer in order to figure out what exactly the door is, how does it behave, how it should interact. So for example, can the player open doors? And if they can, can the player open every door in the game? I remember playing games like San Andreas when I was a kid, and I was always very disappointed that I couldn't just go into every single door in every single building. So these questions are obviously very important. Can the player open doors? Can they open every door? Or are some doors just for decoration? And then of course, another very important design question, which is how does the player know the difference? If you just make a door that is usable, and another door that is unusable, and both of them look exactly the same, if so, chances are it's going to lead to a lot of player confusion. That is why a lot of games usually put something like those little yellow lines, kind of like police tape, on in front of a door in order to make sure that the player understands this is not an open open door. Or sometimes, like in Max Payne, it's really just funny. So yeah, are doors you can't open green and ones you can't open in red? Is there trash piled up in front of the doors you can't use? Did you just remove the doorknobs and call it a day? So yeah, there are many more ways to make sure that the player understands the door is unusable. And again, it's the game designer's job to answer all these questions, try to figure out, okay, if a door is unusable, how should that be communicated to the player? Then can doors be unlocked or unlocked? That's another very important thing. What tells the player the door is locked and will open, as opposed to a door that will never open? Does a player know how to unlock a door? Do they need a key to hack a console, to solve a puzzle, to wait until a story moment passes? There's a billion ways to implement locked and unlocked doors. In all of these ways, all of these are possible implementations for a locked door. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to game design, it's really just figuring out what makes sense for the game you're trying to make. There's no objective right or wrong answer. Then, are there doors that can open, but the player can never enter them? And where do enemies come from? Do they run in from doors? Do those doors lock afterwards? There are games, kind of like Doom, that usually involves arenas. You go in some place, you interact with some object, and that triggers some kind of arena, so a bunch of enemies start coming out from everywhere. And again, it's up to you as the game designer to try to figure out where exactly do those enemies come from. You can't really just spawn them in front of the player, that looks really bad. So one option is you have some kind of door, that door opens automatically, the enemies go in. But again, then what happens with that door? Is that a usable door? Does it go somewhere? Other games really just have areas with like glass windows, and when the enemies spawn they basically jump through and break through the glass window. So yep, if you want to make an arena shooter kind of like this, then yep, you definitely have lots of options. And again, it's up to you as the game designer to try to figure out which way to go. And how exactly does a player open a door? 
Do they just walk up to it and it slides open? Does it swing open? Does the player have to press a button to open it? So upon the doors that I made in this little demo, all of these are possible valid implementations. So this one is based on open and opens like that. This one opens like a slide. This one does not open at all. And this one over here, this one opens up using physics. All of these are possible valid implementations of a door. Then do doors lock behind the player? What happens if there are two players? Does it only lock after both players pass through the door? And that's another thing, if you want to make multiplayer games, you can see how all these questions that you have in single player, they become doubly more complex in multiplayer. That is why making multiplayer games is so insanely difficult. Although I have to say in terms of tech, thankfully nowadays making multiplayer games has never been easier. The tools that exist nowadays make things infinitely easier than it was 10 years ago. I remember when I implemented multiplayer for my very first team game, Survivor Squad, all the way back in 2013. I remember back then I had to pass in naked bytes and basically interpret them on the other side. So I literally just send bytes and some kind of character, then a bunch more bytes, a bunch more interesting bytes. I had to basically handle the file format, the parsing all of that myself. So yeah, this is definitely a nightmare. And comparatively, nowadays, thanks to these tools, it is much, much easier. But of course, you still have all these questions. So in multiplayer, you have to answer all kinds of extra game design questions. What happens if there are two players? That is an interesting question. Then what if the level is really big and can't exist all at the same time? If one player stays behind, the floor might disappear from under them. What exactly do you do? Do you stop one player from progressing any further until both are together in the same room? Or do you teleport that player that's stayed behind? Yep, if you want to make multiplayer games, you are going to have to answer all of these questions. These are all tricky game design questions, which again, they don't have objective right or wrong answers. So it's really up to you as the game designer to use your own skills, use your own brain, try to figure out for your specific game, what exactly is the best answer to all these questions? Or quite simply, what exactly is the size of the door? Does it have to be big enough for a player to get through? And what about co-op players? So what if player one is standing in the doorway? Does that block player two? Yep, handling collisions, that's another thing you have to think about. What about allies following you? How many of them need to get through the door without getting stuck? And what about enemies? Do mini bosses that are larger than a person also need to fit through the door? Yep, lots of questions as you can see. So this one, it's a pretty classic game design problem. Someone has to solve the door problem and that someone is the game designer. So yeah, these are all real interesting questions that you need to ask yourself as a game designer, or if someone else is a game designer, that person is the one that has to come up with all these answers. This sort of problem, this is a really excellent example of something that seems surprisingly simple, but once you dive deep, you can see it's actually insanely complex. Or rather, in order to implement a simple door, in order to solve this simple task, you need to answer basically a thousand tiny unique decisions. And the quality of your final game, that will be based on the quality of all of your decisions. So over the course of building an entire game, over the course of let's say six months, one year, two years, over the course of that time, you are going to make a thousand or a million decisions. And it's all of those tiny decisions put together that pretty much define just how good the final game is. However, these are also just game design questions. But of course, a game requires much more than just game design. You need game design, you need programming, you need art, UI, UX, you need so many different things. So the post here also has a really nice section in order to understand the role breakdowns at the big company. So this is how other people actually deal with the door problem. For example, the creative director. Yes, we definitely need doors in this game. Then your project manager, I'll put time on the schedule for people to make doors. The designer writes a doc, concept artist makes some paintings of doors. The art director figures out what style of doors they need. Then the environment artist, the animator has to figure out how to make the door open and close. The sound designer, audio engineer, all these people have to make sure that the door actually has an interesting sound. Composer, <laughs> if you need some kind of theme song for the door. FX artist, if you want some nice particle effects. The writer needs to figure out if the player will say something or give some kind of world explanation as to why the door exists there. Then there's someone that has to deal with light, someone that has to deal with legal. Character artist, gameplay programmer, AI programmer, network programmer. So all of these people, all of these tasks, all of these jobs, all of these have to do all kinds of things in order to solve this door problem. And funnily enough, right at the end, so the player, I totally didn't even notice there was a door there. So basically all of this work by all of these people, all of these questions by this game designer. And at the end of the day, your player might not even notice that you actually did anything. So yeah, this really is a fascinating problem. And over here she continues, so one of the reasons why I like this example is because it is so mundane. There's an impression that game design is flashy and cool and about crazy ideas and fun all the time, which technically does have all those things, but then it also has this. Just the quote unquote boring day-to-day -day work on those boring time decisions that don't happen automatically, so someone has to come up with that. But when I start off with, <laughs> let me tell you about doors, it cuts straight to the everyday practical considerations. So yeah, being a game designer is a very tough thing. If you want to learn about game design, I highly recommend the channel Game Maker Songkit. He does a bunch of really excellently produced videos, all of them talking about multiple games and how designers solve the various problems. Another excellent channel is AI and Games. This one is a little bit more technical, a little bit more focused on AI, but still talks quite a lot about game design, since AI and game design are definitely very tied together. How the AI behaves is pretty much dependent on how the game design is. 
Another great channel is Extra Credits. Although I haven't seen this channel in quite a while, but these videos from nine years ago, I remember that I watched all of them. So if you want to learn about game design, this is also great. And on the same website over here, Liz also has a bunch of references to a bunch of books. So you've got the famous one, A Theory of Fun. You've got The Art of Game Design. So you've got a whole bunch of books if you want to learn about them. The only book on game design that I've read myself is this one on designing games. This one is written by Tynan Sylvester. That is the lead developer behind the excellent game RimWorld. So if you want to learn about game design, you've got tons of sources. And this post is also an excellent example of just how difficult game development is. Honestly, making a complete game might be one of the toughest things anyone can do, specifically for solo indie game developers. I mean, really just look at all of these roles that exist in a big company. And if you want to be a solo game developer, you basically need to take in all of these roles by yourself. So you, one person, need to do all of these tons of tasks, again, just to implement a simple door in your game. So if you have a friend that thinks that game design is easy, if they think that game design really just means playing games 24-7, if so, then go ahead and show them the door problem. This is an excellent example of just how complex games are. Even just a super basic thing requires an insane amount of thought. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.